Hey folks, my name is Dave. Welcome to NTD Racing. We just got done putting a flatbed on Mambo. Let me show you how we did it. So to build the flatbed of Mambo, we're gonna use a program called Bentec. I have used Bentec a bunch of times. I have a full playlist, I think at least seven videos that I have of me using Bentec. And let's talk about them real quick, what they are. They are software and then they are also hardware. It's a really company that started with software. So let's talk about that first and what their software allows you to do in, um, their Bentec software is basically define a roll cage or in this case a flatbed or anything that's made out of tube steel. They also have sheet metal programs and those kinds of things. I primarily use it for my tube steel designs. And you start with things that are called pick points. I'm about to show you how I do those. And then from the pick points, you connect those things with uh, tubes. In this case, this is two inch D DOM tubes. And then more importantly, as you kind of see like these complex nodes where you have a bunch of tubes coming together, you know, how do you define like this cut right here? Well, what you can do is you can pick that tube and then, and then you can say, well, show me the cut profile that I would need to cut to make this tube fit to all these other tubes. And it, it gives you a piece of paper that you cut out and you wrap around the tube and you mark the profile and then you can cut it with an angle grinder. The other great part about this company is that they also started making hardware to cut this thing. They have a machine that is called the Dragon, I think the 400 or the 250. And that machine will go in here and with a plasma cutter actually cut that profile for you. And in one of my videos, I show you the contrast between my cutting with an angle grinder where I cut Honcho, which is our 1978 Jeep J10, which will be racing at the Baja 1000 this year. I cut all 115 tubes of that. It takes like three to four months for me to do all that, really tedious. And contrast that with this roll cage, which is Lefty, our new uh, trophy truck, which we're building also for the Baja 1000 this year, uh, about 115 tubes. And we cut all these out at their place in Osceola, Wisconsin. And it takes about three hours to cut all the profiles for all these tubes. Super amazing machines. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and try to visualize what we're doing on Mambo as we're building the, the flatbed. So what we'll do is we'll go over here to making a new assembly. And so just a, it's a blank sheet here. And here's your coordinates. And they, they kind of orient it makes sense. You know, that when we're doing this, I'm gonna kind of keep the front of, of Mambo, back of Mambo, left and right, you know, and those kinds of things. So it makes it pretty easy to just visualize what you're doing. And you kind of start over here at the origin and we'll say uh, make pick points and then apply and that's going to be the, the first pick point. One of the things you got to remember when you do pick points is that if you don't hit, you put all these values in here and if you don't hit the apply, it doesn't make a pick point. So you got to make sure that you remember to do that. Another thing is, is you kind of got to be kind of good at visualizing things in space a little bit. So it says, it, you know, and I'll, you'll see what I'm talking about as we kind of go through that um, because you got to put the pick point, which represents the center line and the end of the entity that you're making. So let's say you're making a tube. That's you know, what we're, this first one we're doing is a four inch square tube. Well, let's say you have the, a tube coming in perpendicular to it. Well, you got to subtract like two inches to make the center of that. And it'll make sense here as I go, kind of go through it. So let's, let's show you how we're laying this thing out. So and we're going to start over the wheel arches of the flatbed and as we did some measurements and as we put the the bus at full bump so it's all the way down on its bump stops you know and the airbags have been completely released and i did some measurements i figured out that the clearance for the rear tires over the the bed parts or the um i guess the those c channels that kind of make up the the frame of the truck is about four inches. We're gonna add two on there for a little bit of slop. So we're gonna try to raise the bed up about six inches as it goes over the wheel arches. And we're gonna use some four by four inch square tube and we're gonna use some two inch by two inch square tube to do those things. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'll make a pick point and as we're, I'm gonna just start with a four by four inches and I say, I want my next pick point to be behind the where we're gonna start here. We're starting at the front of the wheel arch, we're working our way back. And I want it to be 40 inches and you can kind of see as I roll my, my mouse here, there it puts that point. Now, if I don't hit apply, that pick point never happens, but as soon as I hit apply, now there is a pick point there. Um, and then now 
that's like the ends of two of my tubes that I'm putting on there. So now what I want to do is I want to basically get rid of the values in here. So I'm going to say clear values. That's not something you always have to do because sometimes, and I'll show you here in a second, that you can keep a value in there and then you can just kind of change sides for those values. But if you go in here and you don't put a value in here, let's just say it is blank, for example, um, then it will never make a pick point. So you try to make, put another pick point in there and it will never let you do it. You won't see the pick point. So there has to be some kind of a value in there. So by hitting clear values, it'll put zeros in all the values. And then I put in 96 inches to the right and then I hit apply. And the cool thing is, is I want the next one to be 96 inches to the right. So I can just select that point. It puts it over there again and then I can hit apply. And then now I can go ahead and say, okay, now I want to, th these points will be connected by a piece of tubing. Right now I have in there two inch DOM. That's not what I want. I actually want it to be a four by four inch square. And this is something that you can go ahead and add into your library of tubes. You can go into your tube library and you can just go say, go ahead, add in whatever kind of tube that you want in there. In this case, I added in a four by four inch square tube and I want it to be a straight tube and I want it to be between this point and that point. And then it asked me which way I want to rotate it. I want it to be totally, I don't want it to rotate it at all. I want it to be flat on the, the bottom. So I'm going to say, okay, on that one, then I want one to be in there over there also. And then now if I want to visualize what that looks like, I can say hit main. And now it shows me what those square tubes are going to look like. I'm going to go back over to pick points. And now what I want to have happen is I want these things to connect. So we're going to have two tires right here, or, you know, the, the rear end rear axle of the bus right here. And so the next tube is going to kind of come across over here. So I want, I'm going to clear all the values out of this whole thing. And I want it to be to the right. 27 inches is how many inches I need that thing to be over to the right from this point to clear the tire. But remember what I talked about where it's it's got to be the very end of the tube. So that in that tube is going to be back two inches from the center of the other square tube. And then I hit apply. And then now as I go over to this one right here, this is another cool thing. So it put all those dimensions in, but I don't want this to be two inches to the back. If I just go over here and click on the front, it'll move that two value. It says, okay, I think he wants me just to mirror it on the other side. And then I can hit apply. And then I can go over to this one. And it says, well, I, you know, I don't want it over there. I actually want it to be on the left side. And then I can hit apply. And then for this one, I can say, okay, I actually want it to be on the back side apply. And you can kind of see how I can transfer all of those values and move around pretty quickly and create quick uh, pick points. And then I grab that same four by four inch square tube. I hit the straight bar and I just kick those things up. And since the square tube is going to ask me how I want to rotate it every single time, which I don't want to rotate, but it still asks you that. And then now you can kind of see how those things are. And I can kind of start visualizing all that stuff. And now what we can do is just continue doing the same thing as we build up this flatbed that's going to go on the back of Mambo. All right, so after doing a whole bunch of just finding pick points, and again, you know, you kind of see how like this pick point right here, which makes these two inch tube, it's got to come up three inches and then it's got to go forward one inch. And you kind of see just some of the mental gymnastics that have to happen to kind of just find those points, but just a little bit of practice and it comes out pretty good. All right, so what we have resolved here for Mambo is you can kind of see this is where the wheel wells are going to go for Mambo. Now to complete this out, I will eventually come back in with some Fusion 360 to make a plate that goes over here. It'll probably be a quarter inch plate. Uh, to make up this wheel well. I'll probably actually have it extend above a little bit, put some features on there so that we can do tie downs on there and make it look pretty trick. Maybe even put our logos on the wheel well part uh, there. Uh, besides that, um, you can kind of see how the square tubes stacked on top of each other give a whole bunch of rigidity and strength right here and also raise it about six inches. This piece right here will be 36 inches over the tires to clear that. We're gonna have a 24 inch piece right here. So this whole piece right here, will come from one four by 10 foot sheet of plate, uh, diamond plate. And then the two pieces back here will come from two more sheets of four by 10 foot diamond plate. And then we're gonna have them cut off just a little bit right here to make this angle and make it kind of a ramp to drive up on top of this. It's only a four inch rise from the, the deck to this next uh, level to get our tires up there. And we'll be parking with our tires right over top of the wheel wells of, uh, of Mambo. So now it's time to look at where we're gonna get the steel for all this. So we live up in Monument, Colorado, and I needed some metal. So I looked online, called around a little bit, and we found this place, Reliance Metal Center. 
And uh, I'll tell you what, anytime I have an amazing customer experience, I like to tell you about it in case you're looking for metal in the Colorado Springs area. Things that we need are DOM, we need sheet uh, metal, we need the diamond plate today. We talked to a guy named Donovan at the Reliance Metal Center and, I, and it just it was a great experience. He's super helpful uh, to us and, uh, and so we really appreciate it and we'll be coming back giving you more business in the future. All right, so as I go to start assembling this thing, what's kind of cool is that since I made it a two-foot section, a three-foot section, and basically a 10-foot section in the back, is I'm going to assemble, cut all the tubes, and then weld them in those different size sections so I can, just with two guys, we can lift all the parts onto Mambo, and it makes it a little bit easier. So we'll put the two-foot section on, then we'll weld them together. So to cut all of these tubes, I've been using a bandsaw. It's the same bandsaw I've been using for uh, literally the same blade to make two race trucks and then now the flatbed for Mambo. So pretty amazing. And there's a link in the description below if you're interested in getting one of these for yourself and you can get it from our Amazon store, which we appreciate it because it definitely helps us out paying for all of our race trucks and those kinds of things. Uh, from there, cleaning off the rust off the back of Mambo it did take a little bit of time. We're using uh, some wire wheels and some flap discs to try to take off as much rust we can without taking off too much of the uh, the metal. And then we'll start to assemble the entire frame on the back of Mambo. Anytime you weld any structure together, it starts pulling and pushing. So, so before we weld the plate steel on the Mambo, we will use the plate steel to help us square everything up. So we're just assuming that the plate steel and it is, is pretty much all cut at 90 degree angles. And then we'll use some ratchet straps just to kind of push and pull that metal frame, just a couple you know, fractions of an inch to make sure that it is square and everything looks kind of nice when we go to weld it together. And then we'll start finish welding everything up with uh, basically some stitch welds, using about a two inch weld and doing our best to evenly space that so visually it looks nice. While we're welding, one of the things we'll really use caution with is we won't do too long of a run of a weld in any one place on the sheet metal because if you build up too much heat, that thing's going to stretch out and then eventually it's going to start buckling at one point. So we'll weld one section and then we'll go to the complete other side of the truck and let that side cool while we weld the other side. And we'll just kind of keep going around making small welds so we don't get any kind of buckling of the sheet metal. All right, here is the almost finished result of the flatbed. We still got a little bit of welding to do around just to get the plate down. It's kind of tacked in place right now for the most part. We're gonna put some caps on the end of this. I'll use my uh, Fusion 360 and the Langmuir Systems Crossfire XR to cut some really trick quarter inch plate that'll cover this up. It'll extend above. It'll kind of give us a little bit more rigidity and have some anchor points here to tie lefty down with. Overall, the dimensions of this thing is about 98 inches wide. It is over 15 feet long. So Lefty will be hanging off of the back. A lot of other really cool projects going on. So this is the flatbed video. You can see inside Bear has been working on the flooring and we're getting ready to do the interior of Mambo. This thing's gonna be so cool cruising down the road. I think we also got a plan to put a rack on top. Somebody said something about AstroTurf. So uh, that's gonna be really cool. Can't wait to do it. All right, thanks for watching. If this is the kind of thing you like, this is the kind of thing that we do. I hope you will join us next week. We're working on Lefty, we're working on Honcho, Ghost, Mambo, Dung Beetle, our new Class 11, which we'll try to get ready for next year's Baja 1000. Anyway, please consider hitting the like and subscribe, ringing the bell for notifications. Those things help us out. It makes them show the video to more people, and we do appreciate it. We'll see you next week. Take care of yourself.